My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be one of my friends that's trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me, at Jim Kramer. All right, the market rarely moves in a straight line. So for the last seven weeks, tech stocks have been hammered mercilessly while the banks and the industrial soared. But today we got what is called a counter-trend rally, where the Dow advanced 103 points, some industrials in there, but a lot of financials and mostly some techs. The S&P gained 0.7%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq roared 1.23%. Now, why do I call it a counter-trend rally? What is that about? What does that word mean? That means because nothing's really changed. In this new environment, the banks and industrials can do no wrong, while the techs can do no right, even if they get the occasional reprieve counter-trend, as they had today. Remember, as I have told you, you've got a huge cohort of money managers, years and years of money managers, who've been watching the bond market, and they figure we're about to get hit with booming economy that triggers an unstoppable wave of inflation. <laughs> now, that's good news for the industrials, all right? The industrials do well in that situation, uh, although I think they've run too much relative to their actual prospects. But it's also good news for the financials because elevated inflation means the Federal Reserve will eventually have to tighten and higher short-term rates will allow the banks to make more money. Meanwhile, tech's been dragged down by the fear of inflation, which erodes the value of all what are known as long-dated paper assets, which include stocks, particularly tech stocks. Historically, that's what always happens. But this is something that confuses younger, suddenly flush investors, courtesy their stimulus checks or stimmies, and they've never really lived through a time of elevated inflation, uh, so they don't know or care about the drill. But I think these younger investors could be right for the wrong reasons. They like tech no matter what. And if this inflation turns out to be temporary, if it's under control, as Fed Chief Jay Powell has argued, then tech does have a lot more room to run. However, if you are watching the show and you want winners right now, that means playing the trend, not the counter trend. On a day like today, you actually get some buying opportunities in the big cyclicals that have been cleaning up lately. Remember, the industrials have been roaring so much, in part because they just aren't so... There's just so few of them. So they have tremendous scarcity value, which is why you have to pounce anytime you do get a buying opportunity. Let me give you some examples of what attracts me to them on a day like today. Well, we're going to start with the hottest of the hot. I mean, it is amazing. This is the hottest of the hot. But it's farm equipment stocks, which we've suffered through for years. There are really only a handful of these left. There used to be a lot of them. So the best of breed names have been roaring in anticipation of a booming farm economy. Deer's the most obvious example. Here's a fabulous company with a long history of miss- missing estimates. That's right, you heard me. Or giving you a disappointing forecast. But with agricultural commodity prices worrying, Deer's last few quarters have been excellent, and management keeps raising guidance. Still, the stock of Deer is up 38% this year and is now selling for 23 times earnings. That means it's trading like a secular growth stock, like a Facebook. No, it's actually, it's actually more expensive than Facebook. Not a boom and bust cyclical, which tend not to be that expensive. Now, can we really justify that? Absolutely, because there's a scarcity of farm equipment names. Agco, remember Martin Rieschenhagen? Agco is really the only publicly traded rival here. And Deere has been aggressively buying back its own stock for years. They've shrunk the share count by 25% over the past decade. Agco has been doing the same thing. As a result, you've got a genuine stock shortage in the farm equipment space. Do you understand that? There's fewer shares to buy, and there's not that many companies in the space. Now, you see the exact same thing playing out in the railroads. All aboard! Which had some wild action today because one of the last independent American rails and one of our favorites, Kansas City Southern, is being acquired by Canadian Pacific. That leaves us with just Norfolk Southern, CSX, and Union Pacific, the latter of which we own for ActionLawrencePlus.com. Now, I think all three of these stocks are now worth buying. Right. Well, I actually liked them for a long time. Uh, but the most enticing is Union Pacific, uh, it, which is kind of ridiculous. The stock really got crushed today. People are worried because Canadian Pacific is their West Coast competitor. But I don't think this merger is going to do all that much damage. What really matters is that another player has been taken out, creating more scarcity value, which makes Union Pacific the buy, not the sell. How about engines? That's another classic industrial group. There's really just two left, Caterpillar and Cummins. Both of which, again, have been voracious buyers of their own stock. Think scarcity. Caterpillar shrunk its share cap by 15% over the last decade. 
Cummins by 25 percent uh, in retrospect, those were pressured buys, right? What if you want to rent a machine rather than buy one? Well, then you've got United Rentals, another one that's been aggressively buying back stock. They've shrunk the share count by 19 percent in the last 10 years. Once again, scarcity value is working for you here. Now, I could perform this exercise for nearly every industrial, and you would see the same dynamic. Throw in the fact that many of these companies are components in the S&P 500, so they attract lots of automatic buying from index funds. And you get another source of endless demand. As long as the rotation continues, I think they do have more room to run, and today's the breather, maybe tomorrow, where you can finally get into some of these stocks. That's it. I don't want to totally dismiss the possibility the rotation has run its course. Today's move into tech was very powerful. But I worry that the moment we get another whiff of inflation, this counter trend rally will quickly fade. And when it fades, we'll find out that there's way too much stock for sale in the cohorts that aren't working or that have been the counter trend like today. The growth stocks are the opposite of the cyclicals. We have more shares than we know what to do with. Think about it. The amount of newly public tech and biotech stocks is preposterous. There's simply no end to them. And many of the newer ones are second-rate posers. Others are just in crowded spaces. Software as a service for customer relations. The Internet of Things, electrical vehicle parts, financial technologies. I mean, you can't keep track of all of them. Their share counts are endlessly growing because they pay people in stock. And the new ones crush you whenever a lockup on insider selling expires. Very few of the stocks that roared today belong to companies with powerful buybacks. Don't forget, the market's voracious appetite for new deals last year allowed pretty much every single unicorn to hit the IPO shoot. So now you've got too many unicorns competing for the same pot of money. Throw in the SPAC attack and you get enough supply to drown the market in tech. You need these new deals to dry up because you can get a true bottom in the group. Only that way, which is why I keep saying that we aren't there yet. Remember, the stock market's ultimately driven by supply and demand. It is a market. Right now, the industrials have huge demand combined with limited supply, today being the exception. You have techs that have diminished demand with ever-increasing supply. Of course, there are other possible ways for the rotation to end. Maybe we get a bunch of tech mergers. Maybe the industrials and financials report disappointing earnings. Maybe somebody shuts off this SPAC spigot, thank heavens. Really, though, the rotation ends when we get some combination of a cessation in new share issuance and a belief that the inflation story really is transitory, like Jay Powell says. Believe me, it can happen. Usually it would have happened already. But we're in this weird situation where the Fed is refusing to tighten correctly, and these SPAC deals just won't stop. They are overwhelming. Surely every now and then we'll get a reprieve like we had today where the bond market behaves itself. But I don't want to bet that this counter trend rally will last for long. And that's why I recommend lightening up on some tech tomorrow, trying to find some industrials you can get comfortable with. What am I talking about? Nucor, the best steel maker. Boeing, down for a day. Union Pacific, crush. Don't overlook the old school automakers. Ford and GM, yeah, I know about the semi shortage, but so does everybody else. I like the better airlines, too, and there that you're talking about United and Southwest. But the bottom line, you need to stay diversified. If you only own tech, where you're going to miss out on the great reopening stocks that were thrown away today. So take advantage of this temporary weakness in the industrials. Scale out of some tech into strength if you need the money to buy the industrials. And you know what? I don't think you'll regret it. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.